What is going on Rocket Powered Sound Designers? In today's video, we're going to be making a trap bell inside of Serum and this is what it sounds like. Yeah, that's literally made 100% inside of Serum. There's no extra noise or anything. It's literally just a sine waveform. So what do you say we jump right into the video? By the way, if you're new here and you haven't already subscribed, click that subscribe button. Because if you're not, you're missing out on daily Serum tutorials all by me every single day. And who wants to miss out on that? The best Serum tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> Anyways, guys, first things first, we're gonna be rocking a sine waveform on oscillator A and the reason a sine waveform is so perfect for the sound is because uh, the sine isn't what's doing the dirty work. The sine is really going to be providing a foundation for the effects which is going to make the bell effect um, to run off of but we don't even want the sine to really even be that visible. Okay, so I'll show you guys what, you, what, we, what I mean once we start to get into the effects section. Now right here we can just leave it as it is, you know. And maybe in the envelope section, we can turn down a little bit of sustain here, maybe a little bit of release turn up. All right, so what do you say we go ahead and jump straight into the effect section? Yep, that's all we have to do for the oscillate, oscillator section. And first things first on our list is the phaser. Now this is gonna be making our bell sound. If we go ahead and drop the rate down to zero hertz, turn up the feedback to 100%, you're gonna realize, oh my gosh, we're starting to get, it sounds like someone's taking a little spoon and taking a glass and going ding, ding, ding. And that's exactly the sound we want. Now what we're gonna be doing is dropping the depth down to 0% as well as the frequency. And you're gonna realize, what the hell? There's absolutely no like glass sound anymore. Now the reason for that is the depth and the frequency are going to be controlling what we perceive as the pitch of the glass sound or the bell. So you're probably wondering now, how do we be able to control that? So whatever note that we press, it moves with it on the keyboard. Not so we have to manually adjust it every time we hit a key, because that is just so efficient. And you know, when we're producing music, we're all about efficiency. We want to save the most amount of time, but also make our tracks fire. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna drag the note right here, uh, the modulator, and drag it onto the depth. And we're just gonna leave it at 100%. Now let's try playing around. <laughs> so the depth moves exactly with whatever note we are playing on the keyboard. And we actually wanna do the same thing with the frequency, but not turn it up all the way. Now here's the thing, it's very, very hard to get the pitch exactly right. So what I ended up doing was just tuning it up to semitones on the sine waveform because it's easier to tune it here and more ac accurate than on the frequency. That sounds pretty good right around there. I have it around 82%. And that's it for that part. Now we need to really clean it up and make the bell show. And what I do uh, is I ended up putting on this curve right here for the equalizer and then dropping the Q factor down to zero. So we have just about no resonance in the sound. And also I turned up the frequency. So we're cutting out quite a bit of the low end here. So if we turn off the EQ and we turn it back on, we're cutting out a lot of that sine waveform and it's focusing a lot more on the phaser, which is what we want. We really don't even want the sine waveform here, but we need it if we want to be generating sound. Now, another thing that I also did was I turned on distortion and this is also going to really just um, focus the sound on our, um, our, phaser effect here is I put the distortion, I put it on pre so that way we can equalize the distortion and find out or manually choose the frequencies that we want it to distort. And here I turn it to just about high pass at around 
and drop this to 8,000, or no, not 8,000, 6,000 hertz maybe, just around there. And that's gonna do the job. We're gonna turn up the drive now. You guys can probably barely hear that. We're gonna turn on the compressor now and this is gonna fix everything. Turn on the multiband and now turn up the gain. Okay, I need to adjust the phaser frequency a little bit because we are starting to hear the um, the sine waveform come in. So I need to find a good, good spot where it's hidden a little bit more. Never mind, scratch that. Um, we'll just keep on going with the sound here and then adjust that later. Next, we have a hyper slash dimension. And this is there just to add a little bit of stereo width. I'm sure you guys already know the deal, so I'm not gonna be getting into that because um, if you watch my tutorials, you probably already know what this function actually already does. So next, we're gonna finally turn on the reverb. All right, so this is sounding pretty good. I'm just gonna make a few adjustments now so that we can kind of hide the sign a little bit. Hmm, I wonder what I did differently to hide this a little bit better. Oh, that works great. Just turn it down an octave or two if you're running into that issue. And that way, the EQ and the distortion will just kind of cut out those low frequencies that reside inside of the sine waveform um, and the lower octaves while the phaser is on the high, so we're just completely cutting the rest out. Anyways, guys, I thought that was a lot of fun, and you know, it's a really cool sound, especially the fact that it's 100% made in serum. It's not like we're taking, um, a uh, noise and a sample and we're loading up like a glass hit sample in there We're actually making this 100% in serum now guys like I said rocket powered sound is the best serum tutorial on YouTube Where else can you find stuff like this? We're just expanding what you can do in serum and if you're not already subscribed Like I said, you're missing out. I mean, I don't even know what to tell you at this point <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, just drop a like it gives me an idea of how many of you guys actually like the sound If you didn't you could drop a dislike and, you know, I appreciate the feedback. But without further ado, my name is Shane from Rocket Powered Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next video.